Shockingly, a critical part of the infrastructure for NASA's Artemis program is over budget and going to slip its schedule. And I'm joking, it's not shocking at all. So I am talking about the Mobile Launcher 2, the SLS, the giant rocket, the Space Launch System that is being built by Boeing with the Orion capsule on top built by Lockheed Martin that is crucial for NASA's current Artemis architecture. NASA is building a second mobile launcher. The first one is for Block 1, which launched Artemis 1, which is going to launch Artemis 2 and 3. The SLS Block 1B, is the slightly larger version and therefore needs a larger mobile launch system. And that is being built by a company called Bechtel. They are the prime contractor. They have lots of subcontractors which are causing problems. So I'll get into all of that as well as why NASA is going in this direction. And I also want to talk about the fact that despite comments that NASA Administrator Bill Nelson made a couple of years ago to Congress about this being an issue, he did not fix the issue. The problem here, aside from the money and the schedule delay, is the fact that Artemis 4 needs this mobile launcher. It's a mission that's envisioned to include the Gateway Space Station. If this is sounding familiar, if you've been watching my videos, you might remember that I recently did a video on Gateway and the problems they've been having and how it might slip schedule. You can watch that video here. And if it's familiar to you that there are problems with the SLS Block 1B about the exploration upper stage, the problems that Boeing is having building the exploration upper stage for Artemis 4 and beyond, you can watch that video here. So what I'm trying to get at is there are multiple problems on multiple levels about Artemis in general and Artemis 4 and beyond in particular. You might be thinking, there's already a mobile launcher at Kennedy Space Center. It launched Artemis 1. Why in the world are we building a second one that's so incredibly expensive? And by incredibly expensive, I want to show you what the current projections by NASA OIG is. NASA Office of Inspector General put out a report today that is an independent organization within NASA that oversees NASA's decisions and contracts. And they put out a report today that has projections that the mobile launcher 2 is going to cost $2.7 billion just for the launcher, not for the launch system, $2.7 billion and not be ready until the spring of 2029. I want to step back and give you some context. When this award was given to Bechtel back in 2019, the original award was for $383 million to be delivered March 2023. So obviously that didn't happen. How incredibly expensive this is. But remember, it's not about the money. It's about making Congress happy. No, I'm, I'm joking. It's totally about the egregious money that is being wasted. This is taxpayer money and it's all politics. This complete waste of resources is happening because of politics. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but I do want to give you some more particulars. You might be wondering, you have a perfectly good mobile launcher that was built at Kennedy Space Center for Artemis 1 and will be used for Artemis 2 and 3. Why do you need another one? Well, NASA looked into building, or I should say modifying, the current mobile launcher for Artemis 4 and beyond. And they decided that it would be too expensive and it would have too much of a schedule slip between Artemis 3 and Artemis 4. And I'm wondering if they are regretting that decision. Additionally, they haven't completed the analysis from November of 2022 on the Artemis 1 launch about how much that impacted the mobile launcher. The report said, during launch, the SLS generates exhaust blast plume pressure, random vibration, vibration from acoustics and heat, and Bachtel is currently analyzing the ML2 design to determine the extent of changes necessary to fortify the launcher, which may add weight to the launcher, then adding weight actually adds more complications. There's problems here all around. But basically, the second mobile launcher is six feet taller, approximately, and has more umbilicals. And in fact, NASA actually, in the past, they had awarded a contract where they said Bachtel should deliver or X number of you know, umbilicals. And then they said, never mind, you're taking so long, it's so expensive, we're going to do it ourselves. So they actually took away work from Bactal, but didn't decrease the contract, the contract increases in cost rather than decreases in cost. But basically, they wanted a second launcher to account for the fact that this is a larger vehicle that will be launching in the future. So back in 2019, when this award was given to Bactal, NASA estimated that the cost would be under $500 million for the entire ML2 project. That's Bechtel's part plus NASA part, you know, NASA is actually still doing work on this. So NASA has to account for that as well. So half a billion dollars, 
compared to $2.7 billion as the current estimate. I'm just gonna keep harping on that number. <laughs> that is an unofficial number. So back in June of this year, NASA established an agency baseline commitment, ABC, for the cost of $1.8 billion and a, delivery delete, and a delivery date of September, 2027. So NASA's official estimate is not as high as OIG's projection, but OIG goes into this report with extensive examples of how NASA consistently underestimates the cost and schedule of all of these technical things that they are building. So not only is the money an issue, but the schedule is an issue. Spring of 2029 is past the current Artemis IV launch date of September of 2028. But the good news here in a sense is that there is no chance whatsoever that Artemis IV is going to launch in September of 2028 because there's going to be delays with Artemis II and Artemis III that will push Artemis IV, my guess, is into the 2030s. The report doesn't talk about that though. What is causing the over budget and schedule slip? The OIG report points out that it's Bakhtel's poor performance that is causing this. And they list a number of reasons why. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. You can read it yourself down below if you are truly interested. But basically, they have been mismanaging not only their portion, but also their subcontractors. For example, the report says interactions and business relationships with the steel fabricator deteriorated to the point of dysfunction, resulting in unresolved fabrication issues that impacted the ML2 project's critical path. And they listed other examples as well. They listed all kinds of problems and issues. But the real kicker is the fact that NASA had the ability to withhold what they call award fees. That's essentially bonuses. Every six months, NASA is doing a evaluation of Bechtel's performance. And every six months, they had the option of giving Bechtel extra money or withholding that money as a bonus. Uh, they call it an award fee. And wouldn't you know it, NASA is still giving Bechtel award fees, not all of them. In the nine award fee periods from contract inception in July 2019 through September 2023, NASA awarded Bechtel approximately 11.2 million out of the available 23.3 million award fee pool. So NASA withheld some, but actually awarded the two most recent awards to Bechtel, despite the poor performance. The report questioned that, of course, but they also did go into the fact that NASA has changed its requirements for those award fees, as well as other requirements in terms of reporting and oversight. Now, this is a cost plus award contract. It is not a fixed price contract. However, NASA actually had the ability to change it over to a fixed price contract following the interim critical design review in March of 2023. And really they can still do it. They can do it at any time. They can switch over from this cost plus contract where there's endless money that can go to Bechtel versus a fixed price contract where any overruns are going to be taken out of Bechtel's profits. Just like we saw with the Boeing Starliner currently losing $1.6 billion on the Starliner program. I want to take you back in time to May of 2022 when Bill Nelson, the administrator of NASA, was called upon in the Senate to give testimony. And in his testimony, he brought up the fact that Bachtel was doing a poor job. And Bill Nelson said, I believe that that is the plan that can bring us all to the value of competition. You get it done with that competitive spirit. You get it done cheaper. And that allows us to move away from what has been a plague on us in the past, which is a cost plus contract and move to an existing contractual price. And those of us who have been watching space policy for any length of time, we're kind of shocked at this statement because this is Bill Nelson. This is a former senator who was all for these cost plus contracts, especially to Boeing for SLS and Lockheed Martin for Orion. And, and to have this 180 where he's saying that Bachtel is encouraging us to think about cost plus as a plague and to think about sh transitioning to a fixed price contract, well, that was shocking. And what happened since then? absolutely nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing. Like they have, NASA has the opportunity to change this to a fixed price and they're not doing it. The report, the OIG report from today says, while the option officially remains in the contract, NASA officials informed us that they do not intend to request a fixed price proposal from Bechtel. And the reasons they gave for this, one, they are saying that it's probably going to slip the schedule if we do this. It's going to slip the schedule anyway if you don't do it. And the other reason is that they are afraid that Bechtel is going to give them a proposal that is more expensive as a fixed price contract than it would be if it was a cost plus contract. And I'm over here thinking, why does Bechtel have a monopoly on this? This is NASA talking to a poor performing contract contractor. And Bachtel is the one who's dictating the terms here. That's, this does not seem right to me. 
What this comes down to is what I just did about earlier, the fact that this is about appeasing Congress. And not so much Bachtel, they don't have the lobbying power that Boeing and Lockheed Martin and some of the others do. SLS and Orion architecture does not make sense and has really never made sense in the context of Artemis as it is today. However, it is extremely politically popular and has been for quite some time. It is bipartisan, it is bicameral, it is not going anywhere anytime soon. And if SLS needs a mobile launcher 2 to launch for Artemis 4 and beyond, well then SLS is going to get that. And it does not matter how much it costs. I've often argued that the cost overruns, the expense of this whole thing, is a positive for Congress. Not a positive for the United States of America and its taxpayers, but a positive for Congress who gets to take federal money and put it in key congressional districts. There is no replacement here when it comes to money flowing from Congress to NASA to key congressional districts if you get rid of SLS and Orion. So while I do believe that ultimately at some point in the future, SLS will be canceled and they will be relying on commercial alternatives that are much more cost effective, much better for the taxpayer, much better for NASA's programs, ultimately that'll happen. I do not believe that'll happen anytime soon. And I certainly don't believe that's going to happen before Artemis 4. And therefore, you need a mobile launcher too, and you're going to pay whatever it takes to get it until there is an alternative that Congress can see can deliver money to key congressional districts. You're not going to see SLS and Orion canceled. So this OIG report, although it is informative and it might bring up a question or two in any future congressional hearing, don't expect it to change much of anything.